Good morning and welcome to the Jesus is Lord Ministries International here in Cashtown, Pennsylvania. And I'm Chaplain John Wago with the United States Christian Commission. And we're believing the Lord Jesus Christ to speak to us today, to our hearts, out across this nation and world with his word, that it would accomplish the purpose and plans that he has desirous for it. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever would believeth on him would never perish but have everlasting life. And as we come together this morning... The Lord Jesus Christ sent his warriors out to the various cities and towns when he was preaching in this earth uh, two by two. And we knew various examples of those ministers and prophets that went out into the world to give the testimony of God into the earth, speaking to kings and those out among the earth and confronting the, the other nations of the world with false gods and false prophets. And uh, he went out, they went out with armor bearers for King David had armor bearers. He had warriors that went with him to battle. Joab, his chief and mighty warrior, Abishai, Joab's brother, and others that would prove themselves in battle. And so this morning I come to you to bring the word of the Lord God to do war in the heavenlies, battling against the powers and the principalities in and of which the Bible has told us that we fight against with my armor bearers. And uh, I do not believe in religious entertainment this morning. I do not believe in uh, tickling the ears of the hearers, but preaching the word of God in power and truth, that it would go forth and accomplish the plans and the purpose that God would have for it, and he would use it by the power of the Holy Ghost to accomplish that purpose in your life and in your heart, that you would have life and have it everlasting through the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only one name given under heaven which man must be saved. And so as we begin, as we begin this morning, I think it's important that we obey the scriptures James 4, 7 says, Submit, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And I wanted to begin with a statement and prayer of submission. Heavenly Father, I give you control of my mind, emotions, will, and body. I invite you to be Lord of my life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He commands us to put on the armor of God. Uh, Lord, I put on your provision of armor, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the preparation of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which we know to be the Word of God. In resisting the devil, we do not pray to the devil, we do not pray that he be gone, but we speak to the devil as Jesus Christ did in so many cases and instances that he gave us. So we do that now, a statement of binding and loosen. Satan, I bind you. You will not have control of my mind, emotions, will, or body. I loose myself from every stronghold and all bondage in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we speak that same word to loose the ears, the minds, the hearts, and the souls of the hearers of this message today, that they would not be blinded or deceived by the evil one that comes to do that, the deceiver that's the father of lies and the father of murder. We bind you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we command you to go where the Lord Jesus Christ sends you, the pit of hell. And we begin that today to pave a way for the word to go forth in power and truth that it could be received, that the ground of your heart would be tilled up and be able to receive the seeds of faith, that it would bear fruit 10, 60, some hundredfold, and more in your life and those around you for the kingdom and the glory of God. And uh, my armor bearers here, I've asked them to uh, begin by prayer at specific areas. And um, my armor bearer here to, to my right, your left, is uh, Chief Steve Sexton uh, from New Hampshire. And I've asked him to open by praying for the servants uh, around the nation and world. Uh, as you will join your hearts uh, with him uh, and with the Lord to see that is uh, heard and accomplished. Heavenly Father, we ask for your guidance, your blessing, your wisdom, and your protection for all law enforcement, firefighters, and military throughout the world. We ask special uh, prayers uh, in, in your guidance for the family of uh, Chief Miller of the Loganville uh, Fire Department here in Pennsylvania that gave his life in the line of duty uh, this past weekend. We ask for your, your guidance for world leaders to bring uh, freedom and peace to uh, Syria. Uh, obviously, the devil is hot at work, and we need your guidance and your strength to resolve uh, the issues there and bring peace to that area of the uh, the country. 
In your name, in Jesus Christ, amen. Good morning, church. My name is Roland Chadwick, and I'm going to be praying that, you know, I'm praying that God move this morning. I'm praying that God, that, that, that your word come forth like fire, that you have given the speaker the tongue of the learned, that he may speak a word to those that are weary in the land. Father, I'm thank you that your word will come forth like fire to burn the chaff out of those that that just that that being light, that that's not receiving your word, that not moving and doing what your word say do. Father, I thank you for the convicting power of your word that will come forth out of your servant this morning. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for souls being changed and saved this day. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that this word will go forth and take a seat in our spirit, that we'll go forth and produce what the word is, is producing in us, that we'll be able to give it out, that it'll change the life of those that are weary in this land today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, gentlemen. The Lord is good to us. We submit ourselves to him and uh, to be vessels of living water, that the, that the living water of Jesus Christ would pour forth through us to accomplish its purpose in the world. And I do not really present you a resume this morning because accolade to the world and accomplish of, the, of, of, of this world are nothing but filthy rags before the Lord's sight. We could gain the whole world, yet lose our own soul. We'd be considered a fool by God and perish and spend eternity apart from him. And... Uh, I, I suggest to you of anyone that you listen to in regards to spiritual things that you know not what they've done or what they know of this world or what degrees they have, but what they believe. And uh, I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible is the word of God from the very first word until the last. It's God's uh, revelation to us of his character, his nature, and also the way of salvation and reconciliation between man and God, which, is the, which gives us a word and a way of salvation through the one name given under heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and we submit ourselves unto him as our Lord and Master and King and Savior and friend that we could call God Father. There's nothing more powerful than God's word, and God has given us his word as it declares in John 1, says that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And verse 14 says that the word became flesh and dwelt among us, which would be the Lord Jesus Christ in, in, in bodily form to come to uh, express the nature of God and also suffer the penalty that we're all due through the transgression of man of sin on the cross of Calvary where he would pay the price for all humanity, humanity upon the depth of his soul that the wrath of God would be poured out upon him that we would have the right to become a child of God. So we lift up God's word today. We must lift up God's word and receive it as the word of the Lord. And if we want to honor God whom we can't see, we must honor his word and his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that light, I read to you from the second epistle of Paul to Timothy. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also... Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou shalt stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I not... For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me 
in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Philegius and Hermongius. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Anisiphorus, for he oft refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day, and how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus thou knowest very well. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. In the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangle him himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is not is he not crowned except to strive lawfully? The husband and that laboreth must be partaker of the, tr of the fruits. Con consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If, be if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as doth a canker, and of whom Hymenus and Philetus who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, and them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strifes. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all, apt to teach and patient in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. This know also, that in the last days perilous time shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from them such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And now as Janus and Jambres stood, withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith, but they also shall proceed no further. For their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was, but thou also hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. 
But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Preach the word. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust they shall heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry, for I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. For Demaeus has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed into Thessalonica, Crescens, and Galatia, Titus, unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry." Paul is given a word here that was written nearly 2,000 years ago, and we look at this word as an admonition to us, the believers and the unbelievers, the world, the church, and those that all would even begin to walk in this earth. We have to look at this admonition as the pure word of God that comes from heaven. And my friends, what you're interested in today and what's going to do you well is not a good sermon from me, not knowledge or history or a seminary degree that's going to be able to entertain you or make you feel better. For the Bible said that knowledge puffeth up. But knowledge that puffeth up bring pride and bring a fall. For devil was pr puffed up because he thought he had more knowledge than God and wanted to be like God himself. And that's the temptation that came into the world. For the knowledge of good and evil was brought before Eve and caused her deception and the fall of man in the Garden of Eden. My friends, we're not looking to seek to puff ourselves up or gain more knowledge of the mind. We must be desirous of the mercy of God that is a living water that penetrate down to the depth of the soul, a dry and parched land of soul that declares it is dead without God. There's only one way that your soul can be regenerated from death unto life by the power of the Holy Ghost and calling and claiming on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, I am not here this morning to entertain you or give you some kind of teaching, for we have teaching in our country of the United States of America, religious teaching that comes to you in all facets and shapes and forms. And we have so much knowledge, it's almost become something that becomes like, that, it, that it's, 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 uh, it's, it's knowledge of the mind, it's academia, it's, it's learning of things, which almost becomes reviling of the Lord because it becomes akin to being those that have sought food for the body, but they become gluttons. We have become gluttonous of the things of religion. And we think by the, the amount of religion and the religiosity that we have and the buildings and the bigger buildings and the things that go out of religion have made us somehow more stable or self-righteous. My friend, but like a gluttonous person that eats and eats and eats and eats himself until he's sick, we have done just the same with things of God. And we have turned God into something that is a fable and it's something that we have made ourselves God. Because by trying to pursue the things of this body and the pursuits of this world and the pleasures thereof, we have made an accomplishment to be religion as well. And we have turned from God and we have forgotten Him. My friends, we are in a place that we are in a dire straits. If we were on the Titanic, we would be three quarters filled with water in a sinking ship. And the question must be asked what are you doing? Are you looking to seek and save the lost? Are you looking to see that those that are perishing would never perish but have everlasting life through the only one name given under heaven which man must be saved? Or are you decorating the seats on the, on the ship deck of the Titanic which is going under? 
Are you going around and decorating things in a world that's lost and dying all around you? And my friends, we look at tragedy, we look at disaster, we are immersed in it, and we are bombarded by the news media of tragedy that's all around us. And even looking at things like the, the, the Boston, the bombings and different things and tragedies and floods and earthquakes, first off, do we not see those as a warning? Do we not see those as a warning all around us to come and flee the wrath to come? Or do we look and see the numbness that it's providing in us because we're bombarded by these things every day, numbing us to the truth? But my friends, I want to remind you this morning that every day in America, one person is dying every 12 seconds to the tune of 2.6 million people dying in our country every year a population of 312 million people that live in the United States and every year 2.6 million people step off of this earth and go off into eternity it's as natural as life itself death is a part of life because we have gone into a world that's brought death into it by sin but your eternal spirit will live on forever and if you do not come to a knowledge of the truth my friends you will spend that eternity apart from God suffering where there's a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth teeth which has been created for the devil who rebelled against God will you'll be tormented there'll be no reprieve and no hope and no water and no fire escape from the fires of hell my friends I'm talking about a war that's taking place for your soul this very day we, we come to you from a place known known for war known for killing known for suffering to many it's been romanticized and become a place of fables but this is this is a place called Gettysburg where we're walking and living in a place where the most tragic days of this country's history were propagated this is a place where 150,000 men from the north and the south from the same country growing up reading reading many of them the same Bible taught in the schools the Bible but we had forgotten God and we had turned on ourselves. We had attributed the prosperity and wealth and success maybe like no other nation had ever had or seen in this world with the blessings of God because we had found it on a foundation of the Bible and the gospel to go forth from this place, given to be a new world and a new hope for the gospel to be sustained and propagated from this place called America. But as we had determined and we had declared in our declaration that we had inalienable rights given by God, deserved of all men, that all men were equal and created by a, by a heavenly Father, we had written it, we had said it, but we really didn't believe it enough to put it into place. And we had begun to persecute and murder and kill and ride upon the back of another race of people because their skin color was different and it became so vile in the nostrils of God that over the years we had gone from 600,000 slaves during our founding of our nation to some four score and seven years later over four million. Nearly 50% of the population of the southerly states were composed of slaves which you could kill, rape, hang, beat, take their children from parents, separate families, with no recourse of this world. If you stole a horse, you'd be hung. But you could, you could kill a man and be no worse for wear. There was no, it was totally legal, and in the eyes of the legal system, it was right. And then in the nostrils of God, the evil based on greed of this nation had come, become such a stench that there was a judgment of an almighty God that would pour out on this nation, and in four years, it would cost over 600,000 lives. 600,000 men would go off into eternity in this terrible war. And here at Gettysburg, 150,000 would come and fight a three-day battle. And you would have over 50,000 killed, wounded, or missing in three days. 50,000. How do you even comprehend that amount of tragedy and suffering? With no hope of this world. No understanding of medicine as we understand it today. Food, water was virtually gone from this town, and you leave a battlefield with over 20,000 wounded and bleeding and dying with almost no hope of this world, very few doctors, very few surgeons, very, very little water and very little food. They had no hope of this world. But this place here at Gettysburg, as we had walked through the terrible war for nearly two years at this point, became a breaking point. Because although we had forgotten God, God had not totally forgotten us. Because even though the midst of things was destroying this nation, God's hand was ever present and av available through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And unbeknownst to most, most of our understanding thinks that we all went to church. We went to this battlefield with the, with the Bible in one hand, singing the praises and raving the Christian flag. But my friends, it was a carnival of hell. It was a legion of devils trying to draw men down into the pits of hell as they were killing and dying on these battlefields. You see, Satan is one that goes around roaring like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. And he's not a lion that's coming to kill for food. That's nature. Animals kill to eat. They have food. But Satan is a devil and a liar and a devil and a, and a lion that's seeking with a blood lust. He simply wants to kill to kill. He's not interested in food or preserving himself. And that's unsatiable. The, the desire that he has for lust for blood, lust for this world, lust for himself and power thereof is, a, is an unsatiable lust. He's simply killing to kill. And on these battlefields, I'm sure he was taking some consolation as the blood and the suffering was poured out on these battlefields. But to his chagrin, there was one name that stood above all these battlefields, even the suffering and dying. For if a man just had one breath, he could call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. There is nothing that can separate you or anyone or anything from the love of Jesus Christ. That is a promise that's been given from, the, from God from on high. And it said, all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But it said that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever should call upon his name would be saved and not perish. They would have eternal life, everlasting life. That is a promise that rings true even in the middle of the most tragic and, and terrible days of our nation's history on these battlefields called Gettysburg. My friends, if we can find hope in such a tragic place as this town that we're calling to you from, that we're speaking to you from, there is nothing, there is nothing that you will walk through that there is, that there, there is not hope that will be found in Jesus Christ. And my friends, we might walk these battlefields and, and read and, and, and reflect upon Psalm 23 that says, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Well, we can walk battlefields and parts of the field out here, Plum Run and the Wheat Field and other places on this battlefield that have been given names where, where thousands of men fell. And it, it wasn't a shadow of the valley of death. There's places that you could walk out and justifiably call the valley of death, not the shadow thereof. The wheat field, the peach orchard, the Emmitsburg Road. Over 14,000 men would fall on that July 2nd day battle. In the following day, the famous battle of Pickett's Charge, nearly 12,000 men would walk out across a field and 9,000 would not come back. Valley of death, but still not separated from the love of God. But the picture today is not just to look at a battlefield that we look at historically where men fought for causes of this world, but it's to reflect upon the word and the admonition that Paul gave to one of his sons of the faith, Timothy, to be a good soldier for the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, there's a war raging for your soul and for the souls of all mankind, which has been ordained from the very beginning and will last until the final trumpet blows and Jesus Christ returns on a white horse as a conqueror bent on conquest. You see, there's a war that's raging, and it's been raging from the very first day that, that, the, that the world was created, and even prior to, because God is warring against Satan, and we are simply uh, agents in this battle. We have been given life and breath to live on this earth, to appreciate God's creation as part of it. We have been given dominion over this earth, but by sin we have been separated from God and given only one way of reconciliation unto him to come back in communion with the Father and be called a son of God. That's through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which he had given us to become a right to become a child of God when he died on the cross. You say that there's a war that's raging. It said we war not against flesh and blood. That's the things that you see, the natural world and other people. But we war against powers and principalities in high places. We look back through the Bible, there's different stories of warriors and David and kingdoms of Israel going out to conquer the enemy. Well, this is all just a foreshadow of the Lord Jesus Christ coming into this world to conquer death, hell, and the grave. As a good warrior, the best warrior, the greatest warrior that's ever walked the face of this earth was God himself when he came in bodily form as Jesus Christ. Now, you may have a picture like I did for much of my life that Jesus Christ was a wimp that he was some skinny guy that died on a cross growing up in a church that had him up in the front as a dead man. It's not something I wanted to serve. It's not something I wanted to be like. I wanted to be tough, and I wanted to be a man, and I wanted to be a hero. And that wasn't the picture that I had 
either taken up for myself or been deceived of the things of this world or the enemy that wants to see you from coming to a knowledge of the truth. For Jesus Christ said, He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. But I've come to find out, my friend, I've come to find out that Jesus Christ is the most toughest, most bravest, most courageous, most loving man that ever walked the face of this earth because he walked straight and looked down the belly of hell and he took the keys to death, hell, and the grave from Satan himself that we might have life and have it more abundantly. You see, the world, the Antichrist spirit is already active and working in the world and has been such from the time of Jesus Christ. For the Bible said he's already working in this world. Antichrist is opposite of God. Antichrist is opposite of the truth of Jesus Christ. And you may have... You may have uh, received and, and maybe even believe some of these things that are opposite of Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus came to have life, and it says Satan comes to steal and kill. And he says you may have it more abundantly, and Satan's a liar and a deceiver. Whatever he tells you is not the truth because he's the father of lies. And give you life is not just for this earth but for eternity. And it says Satan is the, is the father of murder. The father of murder. What you see around you is evidence of those serving their father, the devil. For that's what Jesus looked straight to the Pharisees, the religious teachers of the day. They were planning to kill Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who had come to deliver man from the snares of this earth and from sin, that we could be in communion with God. And they were plotting to kill Jesus, throw him off the next cliff. And eventually what they would do was see him be accused and be hung on a cross. He said, you are serving your father, the devil. Your father's not Abraham, no, how, no matter how religious you are. Maybe you're religious this morning, but you're serving not God. Maybe a false God, a God made in your own image, or maybe you perhaps are even serving Satan himself in a religious form. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Jesus Christ is the most toughest, most bravest, most courageous, most loving man that ever walked the face of this earth. And he is worthy to be served. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to give your allegiance and your full allegiance unto him because he is the only name given under heaven which you must be saved. And as he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he was buried. And on the third day he rose from the grave and the power of God came upon him to resurrect that mortal flesh that he would walk among the earth for another 40 days to teach the disciples things. And finally, he would say, now is the time I'm going to be with the Father. And as he ascended back into heaven, he was given the proper right-hand place that God had reserved for him to sit next to the Father at his right hand. And through the works that he had done by being faithful to come to this earth and die a death that no man could ever begin to suffer for himself, suffering the wrath of God that was poured out on the Lord Jesus Christ, the wrath of God that was determined for us, for this world, for all the sin of this world, was poured out on the depth of the soul of Jesus Christ. He would be given the keys, not just to death, hell, and the grave, but he would be given the keys to the kingdom of God. And he will return as a king of kings and lord of lords. For he has, made every, he has made every nation of this world and every ruler. He has put them simply as a footstool. You see these worlds, you see rulers and you see kings and you see kingdoms trying to vie for power in this earth. Right now all around you, you see the fighting. And you see the world trying to take over itself. And you see people trying to vie for the next level of power and authority. Ensnaring people. Tyrants that are killing people. They are trying to vie for power which they cannot have because all power has been given to the Lord Jesus Christ on high. And it is a kingdom that shall reign forever. For God is from the beginning until the end. And his kingdom shall have no end. My friends, Jesus is the most courageous, most bravest, most loving, most powerful God, man that ever walked the face of this earth, and he is asking you for your allegiance today. And he has given one of the greatest commands. If you've never obeyed it, my friends, you are, you are walking down a road, a wide road of destruction to the peril of your own soul for eternity. For he has commanded from the throne of God, he has given the greatest command, and I'm going to give it to you now, and I'm going to command it with the authority of an ambassador from the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he said this, you... You must be born again. You cannot see, you cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you are born again. My friend, throw out, throw out one page of what not to do as religion. You're not going to get to God by trying to do, not do something. You're not going to get to God by trying to obey commands of what not to do. 
That's simply a school teacher to show your depravity and your nature that's away from God. There's nothing you can do to get to God. You can study the commandments and it'll bring you closer to God because it'll bring you to your knees because everyone you stare into as a kingdom of God, as the commandment of God, will reveal the nature and the holiness of a pure God that cannot accept any unrighteousness in his sight. If you study the commandments, you should be brought to your knees and begging for God's mercy, begging for a Savior, begging for help, for there's no way you can make it unto him. And Jesus Christ came to save the world, not to condemn it, for he said that the entire world stands condemned already. And then he said, you must be born again. That's not a suggestion. That's a commandment. And in order to walk with God and to know God, you must obey the commandments of God. This is the entire duty of man, is to obey the commands of God. And it's not what not to do. Sitting in a room, turning off the lights, and say, I'm not going to breathe, I'm not going to move, I'm not going to blink, and I'm not going to offend God is ridiculous. That's not faith in Jesus Christ. That's not a life that's been given that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That's not being a good soldier. That's absolutely ridiculous. And that's what some of you have done to think that you're pleasing God. And you've made yourself your own God. Obey the command of God and be born again. You've been born of this world, born of flesh, but you must be born from above. And the only way that can be accomplished is by believing in your heart that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, died, buried, resurrected. The stamp of God and the approval of God was put upon him for the testimony that was given by his life, by his words, and most importantly, by the resurrection of his flesh from the grave. And there is no religion there's no cult, there's no other false prophet, there's no other leader, there's no man, there's no other thing in this world that has even offered to stand before you and God as the wrath of God is subject to be aimed right at you. Jesus Christ is the only one that's ever even made claim to that. My friend, don't try to stand before God on your own self, on your own righteousness, on your own good works because they're nothing but filthy rags before God. But right now, repent Repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the most important thing you could ever do because that is the one way to God to give you eternal life. Peace that passes all understanding. This world is filled with wickedness and waves and trials and tribulations and cancers and death and sickness and accidents and terrible things. And you are not going to evade this world but he has given you power and authority to walk through it with a peace that goes beyond all understanding because your hope is not put in this world. It can only be put in God alone through the Lord Jesus Christ for a, for a day that he will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Come into my kingdom. I've prepared a place for you already. We are not seeking entertainment this morning. I'm not seeking to teach you that you're built up of the mind because all the teaching of the mind has become a gluttonous practice that's nothing but leading people away from God with false hopes of this world. But obey the commandments of God. Put on the full armor of God today by putting on the helmet of salvation, which only comes through repentance and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then put on the breastplate of righteousness, which has been given to you from God alone through the, through the hope and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The belt of truth that holds it all together. That's Jesus Christ. He is the root and the source of all. The feet shod with the gospel of peace. I've not given you a spirit of fear, but one of power and sound mind and one of love. And the power of God is the gospel unto salvation. Take up your shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Each one of those things lies in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's an example that's been given to us. But bind it around your head, your heart, your soul your feet, and pick up the weapons that you've been given as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ and obey the next command that he's given, which says, I'm sending you into this world just as I was sent. It was so important that Jesus Christ prayed that in the garden when he was preparing to be slaughtered on the cross. And he prayed for those disciples, for his work was coming to accomplishment, was coming to fruition on this earth. And he was going to be passing that baton to those 11 disciples. And as he was sweating those drops of blood, he said, Father, I'm sending them into this world just as I was sent. That was a hard cry for God because he says, what I've done is going to be passed on to these boys now and they're going to have to do it. They're going to need the power of the Holy Ghost and they're going to be, they're going to be the foolish ones that overcome the, the wisdom of this world. 
we're putting a lot of trust and hope in him, but, but I've taught them well. And when he rose from the dead and taught them for those 40 days, he told them specifically, I am sending you into this world just as I was sent. And we know that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever would believe on him would never perish but have everlasting life. Maybe you know a lot of religion. Maybe you have a story that goes back to some day of salvation or saying a prayer. But you've lost your first love. You've lost your first love and you are not out sharing abroad those. You're not a vessel of living water sharing the bread of life, the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you've made again religion into one page of what not to do and you're pretty proud of yourself. Repent of that. Repent of becoming your own God and go out onto the streets. Go out into the highways and byways and obey the Lord Jesus Christ and the commands that he's given you. For this is the entire duty of man to obey the commands of God. Go, seek and save the lost. There are desires that no man would perish but come to a knowledge of the Son. My friends, it is time to rise up as the army of God. It is time for you to repent and put down the self-pity that you've been dwelling in and wallowing in and feeling sorry for yourself and to put on the full armor of God and go out into this earth to seek and save the lost in the name of the one name being given under heaven, which man must be saved, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Chaplain John. And I simply believe this book, this is the Bible. I speak to you from a place called Gettysburg, a great place of warfare and battle, but I simply use it as an example for us to go out and make war in the heavenlies to seek and save the lost that no one would perish without coming to a knowledge of the Son. I pray here and believe that the Holy Ghost will go forth with this word to accomplish its plans and its purpose beyond what I can accomplish by my own mere words, but he will reach down into the depth of your soul to bring you to a knowledge of salvation and send you out to be a soldier for Christ into this lost and dying world. My friends, I'm glad to speak to you from Jesus' Lord Ministries here in Cashtown, Pennsylvania. And I uh, pray the Lord's blessing upon you. And I pray that you would t pick up these things right now and obey the commands of God, that you would be saved, come into relationship with God, and spend eternity with, it, with Him. God bless you, my friend. And uh, this is Chaplain John signing off from Gettysburg, reminding you to stay on the narrow way. God bless and Godspeed.